Right, that is the metal coming out of the actual furnace here. Here it comes. Look at that. It's like a living thing. Call me weird, but I've always wanted to see something cast like this. It's just a kid in me. It's also really, really, really hot. Like, really hot. It takes 10 days for the propeller to cool, after which it's still far too rough to cut through water efficiently. It needs polishing, and this is where years of skill come into play. After all the automation, this really is hand finishing, as much as if he was running his hand along it to do it. The operator's movements are replicated by the remote arm. It's like an extension of his body. These propellers are finished to a tolerance of tens of millimetres. So this guy is an artist of incredible precision. Because in real life, that isn't just a beautiful thing, a piece of sculpture. It's got a very, very big job to do for the next few decades. After a professional polish, the 70-tonne propeller is ready to leave the factory. The more I see of the effort and artistry that goes into crafting this beautiful sculptural thing, the sadder it is to think that, just like the one on our ship, it'll spend its whole life underwater, unseen, and that from the moment it starts working, it'll be under constant and vicious attack from a deadly force called cavitation. When a propeller turns in water, it generates millions of tiny bubbles on the surface of the propeller blade. The bubbles only last for a few milliseconds before they rapidly implode, sucking in water at phenomenal speed and sending it out as supersonic microjets. They're tiny, but because there are millions of them, this constant bombardment creates enough force to damage the surface of the metal, eventually eroding the blade and destroying the propeller. 